I was well, not sure that I would be the keynote speaker uh, it was announced as such. I was uh, tasked by Mr. Abdullah Gold to give you a briefing on the Indian Navy by 2025 and how Pakistan Navy can respond. So considering the audience, what I have done is that uh, since we are all in Islamabad, sea is too far away, so there is a gap in understanding uh, what is going on at sea. And uh, I'm sure some of the information which I will give you will be a little bit of uh, repetition. Uh, you must be uh, knowing about it. So, uh, and the previous speaker also talked a lot about the uh, current time and the nuclear uh, nuclearization of Indian Ocean and extending the maritime boundaries. So, uh, let me uh, I've prepared some slides and I will uh, go uh, slide by slide. And please feel free to stop because it's a good opportunity for all of you to understand what's going on at sea, right? So just feel free to stop me if you want to, you know, make it a point. It's a rare opportunity that I also get to interact with people. So uh, next slide, please. So this is the, uh, unlike the Air Force and the Army, the Navy's uh, fight the war out uh, to long distances. And uh, you can see the, where Pakistan is and uh, the major sea lines of communication are uh, passing all over the Indian Ocean. The problem in the out at sea is that international law is supreme. So uh, the belligerents or the uh, countries just cannot uh, engage in uh, some kind of active uh, uh, fight it has very severe repercussions on world economy and the international law. So uh, in this backdrop, uh, you can see uh, the Indian, uh, with Indian uh, Peninsula is, and uh, the choke points at Malacca on the uh, uh, east, just uh, south of Malaysia, then you have the uh, Gurmas, uh, at the Persian Gulf and I just want you to remember that and then near Yaman you have the Babel Mandal. So you keep on hearing these three straits, uh, very important, a uh, lot of uh, people talk about. Uh, next slide. So it is the world's third largest ocean, next. And uh, I've already talked about the strategically important uh, uh, straits, they go back. And the, uh, the previous speaker talked about 32 literals. It has about uh, 56 literal countries uh, in this region, which the Indians have made an organization with the help of Australia, which is known as Indian Ocean Regional uh, Association. And uh, it has a rule of consensus. So uh, they are not allowing Pakistan to enter that because if all the members don't agree, and India uh, stonewalls that, so we are unable to join that. So this is what has been going on for a while. Next slide. Next. So this is the uh, uh, Indian nuclear threat uh, now coming out of the sea. You have the Arihant, which is already out at sea. The next one is coming, uh, next SSB, and these are the ballistic missile nuclear submarines. They are huge. They have these uh, ballistic missiles and they are not kept near the uh, places where normal shipping is. So they are uh, hidden somewhere far away so that normal uh, you can't go and uh, interact with. So these are the ballistic missiles and uh, the other countries you already know, uh, the, the, you know the Americans, the Russians, the Chinese and the other uh, nuclear powers, they have this uh, sea-based deterrence. So this is, many of them have even uh, the, like UK and uh, France, their uh, nuclear arsenal is more at sea rather than at land. Next. Now there is a difference between uh, ballistic missile nuclear submarine and there is a attack submarine, which is new. Uh, pro, uh, the, the difference is that the weapons are conventional, but its propulsion system is nuclear. So it doesn't need to come out and uh, fuel. 
and uh, they have uh, uh, taken it on lease from the Soviet Union and uh, it is the Akula class submarine, they call it Chakra. Next. These are the uh, smaller submarines. One of uh, the submarine was caught uh, during uh, Purvama crisis, uh, Calvary, uh, about 150 miles south of uh, Ormara. So uh, these are the conventional submarines which are run on diesel electric. And uh, they have spent a lot of money on this, this uh, French submarine which they are making at Bombay. Next. These are their uh, German submarines. Uh, these are all conventional submarines. So I'm just uh, giving you an idea what kind of naval force they have. Next. These are the Soviet Union Kilo class submarines. They have nine of them. So they have a huge submarine fleet. Next slide, please. At, uh, at the moment, they have only uh, one aircraft carrier, uh, uh, Vikram Aditya. I had the fortune to go on this uh, career uh, for a uh, dinner over a year, a year and a half ago. It, still, uh, you can see the, uh, it's very, uh, it, it has made 29 Ks on it. But what I saw in the aircraft carrier was that the Russian technicians were still there and they had certain problems. So don't get impressed with what you see. Uh, the academia will make you uh, terrified that you won't be able to sleep at night. But it is not uh, really the case. A lot of problems with the spares, a lot of problems with the training. So there are issues which uh, <coughs> looks nice on the screen and uh, out at sea it looks nice also. But the actual capabilities might be different. So uh, I just want you to keep it in mind. The next is the, I will go back please. This is the first Indian aircraft carrier which is being made in India at Cochin Shipyard, INS uh, Vikrant. Uh, and uh, their naval chief, uh, if you read the press, it's uh, arguing all the time that to give this aircraft carrier it has costed them seven billion dollars. So he says that I need three aircraft carriers to uh, project the mission you have given me in the Indian Navy because uh, these are big machines so you need to have a period of maintenance. So once uh, one aircraft carrier is maintenance you need uh, at least two of the time, one on the eastern coast of India and one on the western coast. So there is a lot of debate going on. He's asking for a lot of money, but the government has up to now not conceded to his. So this is the, the, uh, what uh, they have. At the moment, they have only one aircraft carrier. The other is going to come soon. Uh, Andrew, sir, may I ask you that what is the life of Vikram? Vikram, uh, and when it came into service? Uh, uh, it is uh, Vikram is about to come to service. This is a new Vikram. Uh, is uh, uh, gone long time ago. This is what I and, uh, naval ships keep on having the same names. Okay, okay. So it is a historical name, Vikrant. So they have used this is the second Vikrant. Mm -hmm. That was an Australian aircraft carrier. Because I, I, oh, yeah. I know that it was out of service or that I thought that then This is the new. Uh, is new. And the, uh, the point which Mr. Abdullah Kul has said is very important with the technology. The B 52 bomber made in uh, 1957 is going to be in service till 2047, 90 years. So with new technology you can uh, increase the life of so many things. So it's difficult to actually now uh, predict the life of uh, machinery and this and that. So it depends upon so many variables. Normally the equipment changes every 5-6 years because of technology but the hulls uh, uh, can you can sustain the house next these are their uh, you know uh, the business side of the navy the destroyers all made in uh, india next these are older ships so you can see a lot of uh, uh, numbers with them next mm -hmm. these are smaller uh, corvettes next